Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Ramoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast. This is the podcast where we have digital discussions, the worlds of pop culture, social media, sports, TV, film, everything really. As always, I'm your host, Peter Ramoliotis. On Twitter, I go as PD Beats. My guest is an actress. You will recognize her from the hit show in Canada on Crave TV and the hit show on Hulu in the U.S. Um, she plays Bonnie McMurray in Letter Kenny. Camila Cole is with us. Camila, welcome to Pop Turnative. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. No problem. Um, when did you kind of decide that storytelling and acting was something you wanted to do? Um. I don't really, I'd say when I was a young teen, I realized that's what I wanted to stick with. But when I was a kid, since I was a toddler until probably eight or nine, I was really, really shy. I had to go everywhere with my mom. I was attached to her hip. So finally they got over it because at home I was super loud and obnoxious. Um, So she put me in theater and then um, I started doing theater, just naturally became loud all the time. And then... um, I'd say when I was a young teen is when I realized, like, I really enjoy doing this. I actually want to do this. And then I started to transition into uh, film and television. Absolutely. And I think yeah. theater is really where people, like, really hone their craft. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a whole different world from film and television. Mm-hmm. Like, it's uh, it was definitely a good jumping off point, especially to get me out of my shyness. But, yeah. I mean, I wish I would have kept a bit of it because... <laughs> It's not there at all anymore. <laughs> no, absolutely. So we'll get into a lot of different things, but uh, just first off, congratulations on the success of Letterkenny. Thank you. Thank since you. Uh, it's kind of premiere on Hulu in the States, it's been, mm-hmm. I mean, us Canadians, we know Letterkenny, we know how amazing it is, but it finally kind of got an avenue outside of Canada, which is Hulu, and it's just yeah. been insane. Yeah, it has been. Um, I was in the States recently and I had, there were so many people that I was so surprised, um, that would just throw out a line or something at me. Uh, but I think it, it just goes to show like the level of, um, you know, like familiarity that it has for a lot of people, like even outside of Canada, people can relate to it, which is really exciting. And it's cool for us. Absolutely. You know, they can connect that way. For people that don't know about Letterkenny, what can you kind of tell people about Letterkenny? And what could you tell people about your character, (laughs) Bonnie McMurray? I would say about Letterkenny, it's it's fast paced, it's witty, it's super clever. And that's what I love about it too, because you could watch it once and you'll enjoy it. But the more you watch it and watch it, you'll catch that innuendo that you didn't get the first time, or you'll you'll pick up a joke that you didn't realize. Um, and I'd say Bonnie's, she's very endearing. Um, she's she's aware of everyone's affections but she um she's charming and she's she's cute and she just kind of goes with the flow and mingles around town <laughs> what is your favorite letter kenny line or do you have two that you could share with us like my own lines or just in from general. the show we could do one okay. for one we could do one for you your one of your lines and the one in general how about that um okay so my favorite would probably be low bones i love that um but out of mine, okay, so there's two that I actually use and I don't even realize anymore that they just kind of naturally come out. Out of mine, it's honestly good and you. Like if I'm at a store, or like I see someone I know and exchanging a pleasantry instead of, you know, enunciating everything properly, it just flows out that way. Um, and I say wondrous all the time. <laughs> I find, <laughs> I find like, cause we, we've, we've had like, like Tyler Johnson's been yeah, on the show yeah, yeah. and I, I was telling him that one of my favorite things that I've, that they've done on Letterkenny that it's like an inside joke with me and my family is the whole like, well, how are you going to get people to come? And he's like, I'm going to post it on my Facebook <laughs> and you guys will post it on your effing Facebook. Like that's. One I know. of the best things. <laughs> he's he's awesome. He'll probably love to know that I say that. And and sometimes I actually will like lower and rasp my voice up. And I swear to God, it is it's just subconscious. Someone will be like, You wanna go do this this time? Wondrous. 
Yeah, like, why? <laughs> well, we're on a little bit of a mission and a quest. I don't know it's been, it's been pretty buzzing on Twitter okay. lately of getting like all the letter Kenny people on the yeah. show. Yeah, and we're getting, doing really well. We're getting close. Yeah, because because yeah, we 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 we've had we've had Kiso on. He was Kiso was actually the first one. Oh, that's awesome! I know you got the ball rolling for you. I know, and then you know we had um andrew Her- we had andrew we had uh nate we had tyler and then we had recently we it's not posted yet but we um we we had Dio on Dio on the show oh awesome which was cool so yeah. we're, we're getting there D- dylan playfair tweeted back that it i could saw be, that <laughs> it could happen so we're getting there we yeah. got we got to work on uh michelle and k trev and, and see what they're up to but we're yeah we're getting there um, you'll do it We'll, we'll, we'll get there. Um, but uh, no, seriously, another thing that I I wanted to talk to you about is I haven't had this conversation yet with with anyone. Like I think the only Letterkenny epi- uh, guest I talked about w- with was Dale's. But the one thing that's important to me is the soundtrack in Letterkenny is really important. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I think you know Jared Kiso at Jacob when they first put po- put out the show, they really made an effort to pick, you know, Canadian bands and bands mm-hmm. that they wanted to get out. So what did you kind of think about that for the Letterkenny perspective? And talk then in general about the role of music and TV, because I've seen an evolution in terms of the relationship between the two. Oh, absolutely. I think Jacob and Jared, Jared is so um passionate about the music he puts in and he picks it all, I'm pretty sure. Um, and I love that, you know, he's incorporating Canadian bands and it's, it's such awesome music and it just goes with the show so well. I feel like it's organic almost because you can tell when something's, you know, doesn't really flow. Um, but I agree. I think back to like, I think like the Godfather and, you know, Rota's score and just how, you know, everything was so like iconic at the time. And now the way that we're still able to do that in film and television, but we, we do it in such different ways. If you think of, you know, movies like like Deadpool and just cool ways to incorporate other media. Mm-hmm. It's definitely transitioning in a cool way. No, for sure. What is the ideal project for Camila Cole? Like, what is something that you like as a passion project for yourself? Mm. I'm just throwing these like big questions at you. I know, but that's my job, right? Like, so. Um, you cut out for a second, a passion project in terms of, you know, something I'd like to do with work or just generally? In general, I mean, or work, like, is there anything specifically that's kind of like, like something that, that it's really in your wheelhouse that you wanted to work on? Oof. Um, I would like to take a page from Michelle's book and, uh, do a horror film. Okay. Now we're talking. I, yeah. I mean, I would say, I'd say Evan. Uh, that plays role, but he died in his. So Michelle survived. So I want to, I want to go after Michelle's girl boss, uh, kind of horror. But I love horror films. Me too. Um, I'm going to see Us tomorrow. Are you? I am. I, I bought high, my tickets in advance for that too. So. I have high expectations for that one. But I just, I just think, especially because once you see how a film is made, it just changes everything when you watch it. I would really love to experience the production of a horror film and then to see it come to life, I think would be a very cool. Experience. I'm so happy you said that. Cause now I'm going to loop you in and we're going to be like horror buddy friends. And oh, every yeah. time I have a new, movie, <laughs> I have like a bunch of people like on, whether on Twitter or Instagram that when I see like a horror movie, I like copy, like send like a Matt's message to a bunch of people say like, yo, you have to watch this movie. Oh my gosh. Um, because there's so the quality of horror movies that are coming out. It's insane. Yeah. And even if you think just the way they've transcended, I watch every, Christmas. This is so weird. Mm-hmm. I watch The Shining every Christmas because it is a holiday film. Mm-hmm. Um, it's snowy, you know, makes sense. Yeah. Um, and all of October is um, occupied by the Halloween. Movies, I do one every night. I, I do one every night. Eh? October first to Halloween. Every do night you? I do. I do. That is commitment. I actually committed to twenty four days this year. I missed a few, but oh. I I did twenty four in a row, which I think was pretty, pretty good. good. Um, yeah. have you seen, we just, uh, interviewed the director of it. Have you seen cam on Netflix? I have. Yeah. I just I had the, I, ju- I just had the show. director on the show. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That was a really different film. I, I thought it was really interesting how they showed the story. It was really eye opening, especially with. 
and it's, it segues my next question I have for you, which is, okay. you know, one of the things they talked about um, when I said, was there any kind of um, climactic experience in terms of the reception of the film? And he's mm-hmm. like, um, yes, Stephen King tweeted out that he loved the movie. Oh and I was God. like, wow. So that's incredible. What has been a climactic reset? Like what has been climactic in terms of reception? Anything has happened with interactions on social media with letter Kenny with you, anything like that has happened. That's like notable. Um, I've had some, uh, like athletes, like I've had some hockey players tell me that they really loved the show, which is cool because you know, it's not all hockey. I mean, it's a part of it, but Just that, um, you know, people within like a sports profession are really into the show and they're connecting and laughing and liking what we make. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool to me. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I love the incorporation, too, of the the women's hockey team in the newest seasons. That that, that, that was like, that's one of the things. Super awesome. That's one of the best things that Mm -hmm. they've done. And I think Mm -hmm. Kelly and Jess just absolutely... Like, oh, did such a great it. job with that. Killed it. And, and how important do you think it is for a show like Letterkenny to kind of introduce these new characters? I mean, you want to keep it fresh all the time, right? You have your mm-hmm. core. But bringing in recurring characters, I think, does a few things. It kind of keeps it fresh, gets people more things to talk about. But it kind of – some characters can complement um, other characters as well. Oh, yeah. For sure. I think especially because we have that small town – um, setting that it's important to spice things up and bring a little bit of excitement into Letterkenny. And it's always fun. When it, whoever we bring on the show always brings something, you know, so new. And um, it's fun to just grow the family and uh, see what other people will bring to it. I want to go back to the horror movie thing because I just okay. realized. Sure. So, <laughs> you know when they call people like scream queens or people that are known yes. for doing it? What do you think of that term? I like what do you think like do you want like do you do you think that that's a term that is used um like it's is it used a lot like I just thought of it like I see a lot of people you know some horror mm-hmm. actors from the 80s and 90s and actresses you know scream queen been in these movies and everything do you like like what do you think about that does Kim, does Camila Cole want to be a, scre- <laughs> a scream queen oh, I think if I could be a scream queen and not be typecast as a scream queen I would love it um, but I think everyone should know that the OG screen queen was Jamie Lee Curtis mm-hmm. and no one can take this title from her, but, uh, I, I think that would be cool. Her interview when cool. she, like her interview she did, um, when, like for the new Halloween were amazing where she was just kind of like, I've done so many things and yeah. horror movies is always going to be and like the interviewer yeah. was like, yeah, well like horror movies have been kind of popular lately. And she's like, <laughs> you think <laughs> like I loved her. She, she came off so genuine and funny in that interview. Yeah. Did you see that Halloween? Um, I have not yet. And I'll tell you why, because okay. I got really busy and I want to watch it around Halloween. Like I think it wouldn't have Naturally. been, I don't think like my parents saw it, but I don't think it would have been like I feel like it wouldn't have I wouldn't have had the, the effect I wanted to have if I watched it in like January. Oh yeah, you, know you gotta I mean? keep it authentic. So I will. It's gonna be that's gonna be part. Have you seen Hellfest? No, I haven't. So that one was pretty excellent. That's one of my favorite ones, and uh, it's basically okay. um, it had. Um, to do with a like a serial killer on the loose in like a ho- like a Halloween themed horror film park like a theme park. Oh, I love that. Yeah, so like <laughs> you don't know that like the people think it's part of the act because there's actors yeah. in, like around the park like dressed up as zombies and there's like a killer on the loose in the park. What I love about horror movies, especially stuff like that, is I'll put myself in that position. And as I watch it, I intentionally make myself a shivering chihuahua. I want to be so scared. And I'll think, imagine that was me. Imagine I'm in this park. Oh, I'm going to add that one to my list. Yeah, I'll no, it's it. – I. oh, I will give you a big list. And oh, it, there's, amazing. there's so many. It's so funny because I remember, like, my coping mechanism with horror movies at a young age – I feel I'm so proud of it because I used to get scared from trailers and then I used to <laughs> see the movies and then, you know, what my coping mechanism is. So when I went to go see the grudge, right, I was like freaking out. Right. 
And yeah. my coping mechanism would be like, it's okay, it's not real, it's Buffy, it's Buffy, it's not real. It's Buffy oh the Vampire Slayer. It, she's in Scooby-Doo as well. Like, I know the act, it's not real. Like, I would oh use, like, God. the familiarity. Like, yeah. Amityville Horror, it's, it's Ryan Reynolds, it's okay. It's yeah. Ryan Wilder, it's okay. Like, yeah. That would be my coping mechanism. When I was younger, and I probably shouldn't have been watching these movies yet, mm-hmm. um... I would watch, I'd watch one and then, and I would watch them myself. I was like 10. What was I doing? Anyways, I would watch one and then I would immediately have ready in like a different link on my computer or I'd go on TV and I'd watch an episode of Seinfeld in order to bring myself back to a level of comfort. I guess. We're, we're huge Seinfeld fans on the show here. Oh, I love Seinfeld. Well, we My just, cousins and I used to watch. We have all the box sets. We had, um, we just posted it. We did an episode with Lee Ehrenberg, who played Mike Moffat. He's the one that got awesome. in uh, the parking lot dispute with George. Yes. And oh, then yes. I haven't posted it yet, but we actually did an interview with Peter Melman, who wrote like, Oh my gosh. So many episodes of the show. Wild. Like like, like he, he wrote the yada yada, the double dip. And yeah. it, it's like insane. And we had a conversation literally for like 25, like, 20 minutes about like how Seinfeld was is really not about nothing it's about everything entirely (laughs) which is nothing and everything and whatever in between do you think that that is like because you know like social media is a double-edged sword but do you think like the pros of social media is that like shows like Seinfeld there's like things that have been like from the 90s you know like for we 90s kids like Mighty Ducks Mm -hmm. and all those right they live on forever because of social media Yeah, I think they become almost like, it's like a cult following, right? Mm -hmm. And it's cool that it can bring back like this old culture that we're not, the kids now aren't like into or know about. And then they get to see all the good stuff. I know. It's just, it's, it's, it's insane. A couple of questions I wanted to ask you. Misconceptions of the industry is something that I bring up as a hallmark on my show a lot. You know what I mean? So Mm -hmm. you're you know, an actress from Canada and, mm-hmm. you know, you have a recurring role on a big sh- the show that's very popular right now. Mm-hmm. What are some kind of things about, like, acting or, you know, your experiences on Letterkenny from, like, the behind-the-scenes aspect of things that people, like, assume or know about, but you're like, wow, that's the total opposite of that? Um, some people think that we just all hook up with each other, which is really interesting. Wow. Um, okay. And I can guarantee that it doesn't happen. But um, I think <laughs> there there's some days where um, we'll, <laughs> we'll have a long day. And especially if it's um, an ensemble scene, so there's quite a few of us in it, um, we'll get the giggles. And it's usually Jared. Jared is the worst. Once he starts laughing, no one can like no one can stop it. How do you and do the shore? How do you all do the like the people that do the shorezy scenes, right? Like how do you how do they do those scenes? Like how many takes are those scenes? Do, are, is it I've, <laughs> I've never been in. I've never been around for a shorezy scene. I can only imagine. I can't even imagine. There's have to be more like multiple takes of that. There's no way. <laughs> but some of the scenes with Mark, um, coach. Uh, they're just you, you can't help it when we did the christmas episode and he was sitting <laughs> <laughs> by, by jared or by wayne um singing his christmas lover song i probably ruined like two of those takes and i wasn't even in it i just couldn't help it um it was too funny too it's funny. it's pretty funny how you hear about like people laughing especially like child actors laughing during like yeah. scenes so much that they just keep it in. Like I saw like an interview with like school of rock where Lawrence, like the piano player. Like if you look back, he's like, I he did an interview. He's like when they did the reunion, he's like, I laughed in like every take. And yeah. then at one point they just kind of kept it in because it wasn't really like a big deal. <laughs> yeah. And, and once it starts, especially if you've been there way longer than you should, than you should be. And one person starts, it just, there's no stopping. It's just an onslaught. Could you, can can someone predict like how popular a show like Letterkenny like has become? Like I feel like it's just an amazing accomplishment what 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 you all have done. Like it's so, and I feel like it's only Thank the you. beginning. You know what I mean? Thank you. Um, for, for myself, I went into the first season. I only had a small um, role. I think I was in two episodes. Um, so for me, it was really exciting because it was really the first first real project that I booked. And I was excited just, you know, for the experience. And then as the show grew and my character grew and the, sh- the show kept growing and growing, 
Um, I, I don't want to say I was surprised because instantly there was just something about it that I mm -hmm. really, really liked. But I think what does surprise me is just how universally relatable it is. That's, no. That to me is, is really exciting. And even at home for me, I'll, I'll watch the show sometimes and I'll, I'll hear things or, you know, I'll be reading new scripts and then I'll think to myself, did Jared like look at my phone and see what my buddy texted me last night and just toss it in there because it's, it's exactly the same. It's, um, I don't want to say I'm surprised, but I'm a little surprised. It's that, it's that but show. It's, a surprise. it's that show like Seinfeld where like, if you watch it late night, you'll get those like late night smirks and giggles. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that just like that Disturbia in Serbia bit, like yeah I, <laughs> it, it i think there's something really special about shows that can like produce an audible laugh out of you and i may be biased but i think letter kenny is definitely one of those oh it is for sure yeah. and uh, we're really happy with all the support and i think uh with all the support it's gotten because it's gotten mm -hmm. so much support and uh We'll wrap up, but thank you so much for coming on the show. Well, thank you for having me and chatting with me today. Of I loved course. It. Well, hopefully we can do it again sometime. And I uh, absolutely. Uh, where can people follow you on social media? Where can they keep up with you? All right. So if you want to see Camila tweeting, my Twitter is at Camila tweeting. So K A M I L L A tweeting. And then on Instagram, I'm at Camila Kowal. K A M I L L A K O W A L. Perfect. <laughs> Well, this has been Popternative, youtube.com slash Popternative for previous episodes, um, for the video episodes, Spotify, iTunes for the audio only. Until next time, this is PD Beats and Camila Cole signing off. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.